go. To add to press continue then, I guess, right? Okay. Yes, I'm just gonna actually, um... okay, hello everyone. I'm John Higgins, contributing writer to Film and TV Now and curator of the Facebook page, John Higgins Film Review. And I'm delighted to welcome one and all to this interview special with Dawn M. Robinson, founder of Dark Moon Entertainment, who are based in New York and Los Angeles. Welcome Dawn and thank you for your time today. Um, okay, so my first question is, is on your website, you are described as a deal maker. So what would you say are the key attributes that help you find your ongoing success? Uh, I would probably say like having like a sense of purpose, you know, like that's probably like first and foremost, um, you know, and probably the passion and the drive to do it too. <laughs> mm -hmm. That helps, um, you know, cause you kind of have to have that in order to go with it, you know, like foresight, you know, having like that forward thinking, being like a thought leader, that kind of helps, you know, like, but knowing how to not just be a thought leader, but kind of turning it into action as well. Um, you know, cause you have to foresee things and kind of know how to like fill in the gaps and anticipate like where the needs are, you know, like where the demands are sense kind of sensing it intuitively. And, you know, even when other people can't, like, even if they can't see it, you have to be able to see that vision still, um, and being able to convince them or not even maybe even convincing them, but kind of showing them somehow how to see that vision um, just like you do in your own head um, you know developing trust I think that's really important too like nurturing the relationships uh, you know being well connected that's kind of how you get well connected is just doing that you know like communication of course is key um, you know encouraging everybody to get better and be better I think people around you that that's also helpful Okay. Um, now, I was looking at your website. I mean, it's an amazing record of work. I mean, you've produced content featuring the likes of Lady Gaga, Guns N' Roses, and of course, you've worked with the programs like America's Next Top Model. Now, my question, my next question is, obviously, when you're working with big name brands, how do you build the relationship? I mean, what specific rules when you're building that relationship? What do you lay down when you do that? rules <laughs> i don't know if i would say they're rules there's nothing that's really hard and fast uh you know it's like i appreciate my friends you know like i have a lot of friendships and relationships and i accept them for who they are and what they're willing to contribute really uh you know but i think that i've been lucky enough to be you know part of like a really special moment in time uh and part of like a collective of creatives that uh you know we're really into collaborating with each other right so you know i don't put anything in front of someone that isn't going to light them up you know like i i want them to be as excited about it you know as as i am so you know and it works that way whether it's somebody that's like you know a celebrity brand or if it's a corporate brand you know like it, it doesn't you know whether it's television it doesn't really matter it kind of all works the same way it's like you you have to be on the right you know we're all on the same page you know and it's kind of you have to have that reciprocal energy there um you know it's kind of got to be a win-win for everyone right <laughs> okay um now we understand another thing I've, I've watched from your website is that you have a foundation of about 25 years as a talent agent and you've been segued into the creative script creative scriptive space i mean who were your influences when you made that transition into the cre more creative world uh, so are you saying like my writing influences? Oh, just general. I mean, the idea is, is, you know, I'm, I just think because you, you know, obviously talent agents tend to, you know, people like Michael Ovid, so is one such person who a famous name and he became quite influential in the, in the, the arena as one of, you know, he became at one point the most powerful agents in Hollywood. I'm right. just interested yeah, in terms of. You know, what was, who were the motivators that kind of said, hey, I would like to work in creative, um, to do more like the, the creative content, like the scripted content. Right. So, I, I mean, you know, 
I was formally educated in film and television and in advertising originally, you know, like, but I think that most, like my foundation was mainly in music. So some of my influences were on that side of things originally, like when it came to, especially like agents and managers, you know, you have people that are like, you know, Irving Azoff and Sharon Osbourne and, you know, like people like that, you know what I mean? Like uh, some of my old bosses, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, John Brannigan's one of them, you know what I mean? Like somebody, you know, I had those type of mentors coming up, you know, but then, you know, it's like also, you know, people like Gary Goldstein and Tim Gibbons, like they, they were, they were my mentors and still are. And they really influenced me, you know, encouraged me to keep going, you know, like even when it's, when it seemed like, you know, it's like, even though I was well connected and I worked with people, like I worked with some people that worked on it, you know, the Sopranos and Six Feet Under and, you know, like I was really inspired by those series. And I was like, I, I want to be able to do series like that too, you know, like, and, you know, you know, you kind of get discouraged sometimes, you know, like if, if, if you know, especially like, executives will be like well you know stay in your lane you know what I mean? like you do music really well Dawn you know like it's like you know I, I would get discouraged sometimes and Tim and Gary would be like ah you know like don't 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 be like that like just keep networking you know how to network in corporate you know what I mean like keep writing you know, write about what you know write about your experiences like you know, regardless of what anybody says, don't listen to anybody that's naysaying you and telling you to stay in your lane, you know, like just, you know, it'll come together. And it, I, I feel like it has, you know, like I, you know, I, it's like some of, some of the, my favorite stories for this particular, I'd, I'll share it with you. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the two things that I think influenced me the most to like really have the push into scripted was like when I first moved to LA, um, you know, I was still working mostly with music people at that point and doing branding and, you know, like music placement and, and write, like trying to get things written into things and stuff like that. And I had a really good friend of mine, my friend Thomas, um, he's a music supervisor and he had invited me out to lunch and, um, you know, briefly, I, like I had met like they were working on a new pilot and I'd met, uh, you know, the producer that he was working with on it and his, his name was Vince. And he, you know, I remember him kidding around and telling me how, you know, if this didn't work out, they were all going to work at Kmart. <laughs> you know, like, and, you know, it's like, funny enough, it ended up being Breaking Bad. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, I look at stuff like that, that kind of inspired me you know, in that sense too, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, who knows, you know what I mean? Like if there was a brand situation there, like maybe Kmart would still be around. They could have had like a blue light special on blue bath crystal or something like that, you know, like, um, but like my final push was probably like, I was in, I was here in New York and I was hanging out with a friend of mine, my friend, Phil, um, he's over at Eastern effects, you know, like the, their studio here in the city. And um, he had invited me out and I was with Joel, Fields, another friend, and, um, you know, kind of like we got onto the topic of, you know, how you have this situation in the industry where, you know, people that once you deliver something, like once you're known for doing one thing, you know, like they kind of don't like you to change gears too much, you know, like, and even for him, like at that point, Joel hadn't even won an Emmy yet. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, he was working on the Americans. It was like one of the first, you know, seasons and, um, you know, uh, and I, I started kind of vet, like venting a little bit about like, well, I'm a music person, you know, like, and I was known for that, you know, like, and people didn't really like it when I went into TV. And then once I did, it was like, well, you do this, you know, like you do unscripted, you know, like, and it's like, well, yeah, but I was trained in this and I'm still writing all these things and just take a look, you know, like, and, and he was like, well, you know, I'd love to read some of your stuff, you know, what do you have? And I ended up showing him one of my pilots and he was laughing, you know, like, and he was like, why aren't you doing anything with this? You know, like, and I was like, because I like, I'm so, you know, people, it's like, they want to just make you stay where you are and be like, you know, we wouldn't let you write on this yourself or, you know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll say things like that. And it's like, yeah, but if you're creating something and just keep writing and just keep writing it and, you know, like develop it out, you know, like, because somebody, I mean, it's always going to be changes, but, you know, they can't like, you know, be like, okay, well, we're going to have somebody else. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of people that are going to come in and collaborate anyway. It is going to change, you know, like, but, and maybe they're going to make it better. You know what I mean? Like, but you have to have that, if you're giving them a launch pad, at least, you know, like you're taking it farther than someone that maybe you just had an idea and you're just telling them this thing, you know, like, 
if you're writing from what you know and what you feel and what you experience and what you think it 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 should be and it like is flowing out of you then just kind of go with it you know so that's well, what um, made me have that in, uh -huh. you know, those were some of my influencers basically <laughs> quite quite um, significance i mean um now of course one of the big topics at the moment with everything that's going on is diversity and gender now these are big issues at the moment i mean amidst everything else that's been going on i mean in your opinion where do you feel the industry has progressed and where do you feel it needs to evolve to reach the balance that everyone's seeking well i mean it's funny that you asked that because, you know, I, I mean, I remember starting out in the production side and being below the line when I was much younger. And, um, you know, I worked in, in, you know, I worked in production in news stations, you know what I mean? Like in, in production houses and, you know, it was mostly men, you know what I mean? Like it was kind of a sausage fest a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, that's changed, you know, like, it's like now at least you have, you know, the, and you, and you, I saw the good, the bad and the ugly in that as when, you know, because I was like divorced mom, you know, like when I was younger, you know, and it's like, and I was kind of pie eyed, I feel like too, I was a little naive, you know, like, and, um, you know, I think that a lot of that has changed, like you used to get a lot more resistance and you know now being above the line and seeing like it's like yeah you know like you have more you know like more diversity more color you know what i mean like i don't think that there should be like uh any kind of standard in terms of you know like if the person can do the job then why not like maybe okay and it's like if they're not doing heavy lifting or something you know like there's other things that they can do like and everyone should kind of help them you know get their leg up i kind of feel like even on the above the line side, like you have all these executives now, it's it's almost like every time there's an announcement that's an EOE announcement, you know, they, they make a big deal about it and it's a good thing, but this should be like a normal thing. You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be like, yay, we have to throw a party. You know what I mean? Like it should be like, yeah, they're really good at what they do. They're, they're qualified, you know, like they're rocking it out. You know what I mean? Like it should be, a, you know, it should be a normal thing, you know, like, I think we need to have more of that. Like, I know they're trying, you know what I mean? Like, I see, I see the changes, but they're slow, you know? All right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a bit about the content that you're doing on Dark Moon. I mean, first of all, I want to ask about you about a pilot that you shot for the CBD cooking series. Well, it was a pilot for a CBD cooking series with the interesting title of Meats, Sweets and Treats, which we understand has been released on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, I see many cooking shows all over the place, be it Hell's Kitchen, and we, we have like a thing in England called Saturday Kitchen, which dominates, which is like alternative children's program, which is what I grew up with. So what right. sets this show apart from all these other cooking shows we have previously seen? Uh, well, other than the fact that it's, you know, cooking with CBD, I, you know, I kind of feel like we, we had started, I, it's an interesting story. We, you know, like, I, you know, I had I had some friends that were doing it you know, like in the field doing it, you know, before there were, it was all over the place before, like you had it on the West coast, but it hadn't really, CBD hadn't been rolled out. This was like before Bong Petit and Cooking on High were even picked up, you know, like, so, you know, we felt like there now it's been rolled out and there's a lot of people that still don't know how to use it, you know, like, and, you know, I'm really good friends with Louis Mandalore, you know what I mean? Like he's, and he owns some dispensaries, like he's known for like a lot of tough guy roles, you know, like, but it was like, well, you know, I matched him up with uh, Raya Frazier. She's, and she's like a, you know, a chef that's worked at like the Ritz Carlton and, you know, a lot of like high end, you know, hotel chains, um, you know, and, and kitchens, you know, like, and she's, she's an expert when it comes to like using CBD and cooking with it and, you know, we kind of cooked this up together where it's like, you know, let's, let's, let's actually like cast some people that they're looking, you know, like that are real people, you know, like not just, you know, like we're, we're hiring, we're doing the casting, the formally, you know, like, you know, let's, let's get some people in here who actually have some issues, you know what I mean? Like maybe, you know, like get a soccer mom who has, you know, a child that special needs that needs it and, you know, doesn't really know how to use it, you know, like doesn't know how to cook with it, you know, like a veteran that needs pain management or a senior citizen or, you know what I mean? Like someone, uh, you know, like we have a, a whole cast of like, you know, a, you know, a physical trainer that's looking for muscle recovery, people that need it for depression, anxiety, you know, like face skin issues, you know, like, and, and to actually show 
what like here's their lifestyle here's what they're usually doing here's what happens to them show showing like this is how you cook with it here's all the tips and tricks here's what happens after they did it for a week you know what i mean like here's what happens you know like and not to be like an infomercial you know what i mean like because really we're not getting paid to even do this in in that sense of things you know what i mean like of course the brand immersions and stuff like that that we'll do or partnerships with people we did it for um a social media campaign just for promoting it and um you know but really to kind of like show the stories and 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 what people like that real people can relate to the, the problems that they have and what they can relate to, you know what I mean? Like, and how this, you know, not that it's a cure for everything, but here's a supplement, here's something that you can use as a remedy along with your other regimens, you know what I mean? Like whether it's somebody that's a cancer patient and maybe they are doing chemo, but they need to have something else too, because it helps them eat, you know what I mean? Like they can actually eat, you know, like that's, what makes this series and, and that's why we're so excited about it too because it makes it different it's a little more like not to be like it's not like pbs educational necessarily but you know just something that like it shows them like this is you know you can still have like a gourmet meal even if you if you're you know apt to putting something like that together and you know and still have it taste good and still integrate it you know like so I think that's what makes it really special, and it's exciting to watch. You know, like okay. they, uh, you know, the hosts have a good rapport with each other, and and the cast, you know, they all get along with each other, and you know, okay. there's a good chemistry. Okay. So, all right. Well, um, one of the things you're also doing is you're you're branching out into immersive virtual reality 360 programming, and you shot a concert in this format with the rock band Kill Code. Tell us about the key strengths and virtuals mm -hmm. of filming in VR. Okay, so I, you know, I love talking about this just because of the fact that we like we played around with the technology a little bit when we were like, we had started, we were training on it like before we went in, um, you know, to COVID or as we were going into COVID and, um, you know, I have a really great team that work with me on this, you know, and, and you know, we're really excited because we changed the, we actually made modifications to the cameras, we made modifications to the software, and we created something that really gives people like the capability, like an immersive experience. And even though I know there's other stuff that's out there that's like it, you know, this, uh, to me, I feel like it's the only thing I've seen like this so far that there, it's, there's nothing like it. It gives the person the capability of actually experiencing it in the room you know, and feeling like they're actually there, even if they're not physically there. So, you know, it was like something we were toying around with going into COVID. And then once we did it, you know, um, it was like, wow, look at all the capabilities. We can actually put something together that, you know, helps people People have a completely different new level of having new memories if they can't be at that concert that you know they wanted to be at and now like maybe there's they couldn't attend because maybe the venue doesn't have wheelchair access or maybe there's a worldwide pandemic even you know what I mean? like and you can't leave your house you know like now you can actually like you know have this experience where you know it's like audience participation this is almost like rocky horror picture show, show only you know on steroids you know like it's like they can meet their favorite rock star you know like they can be right there in the room like they're you know at practice and having a jam session with them mm -hmm. you know um you can sit on the couch at your favorite sitcom or or theater thing and, and actually feel like you're part of the production instead of just you know instead of just watching it like a you know like witnessing it you know like watching mm -hmm. it like in a passive state okay so yeah okay well um i so certainly will keep like my key strength yeah you, you know when it comes to filming it, it you know i there's 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 a lot of moving parts for sure you know what i mean like because you know you're having to make sure we had to make sure all the mapping was right and you know like because you want the people to be able to hear it and visualize it the correct way you know what i mean like so mm -hmm. you know even with physical logistics of it you know, it, it was interesting having to set, everything has to be set up, you know, it's almost like rotoscoping, you know, like it has to be set up in a way that, you know, it gets captured correctly and you can okay. edit it. Yeah. Well, um, definitely I'm going to check that out. I'm sure other people will be interested and probably learn a bit about Kilt Cold. Um, yeah. Another interesting show, now this one was quite fascinating to me because I love the title. It's Spleef HQ, this is what we do. Now, 
I understand it focuses on the opening up of New York's cannabis regulations and by accident became an essential business during the worldwide mm -hmm. situation. So what, yeah. what are your goals for that? Because it's quite interesting because in England, for example, there's often discussions about whether cannabis should be legalized, I mean, and the virtues of its, of its health problems and whether it can be curing certain um, ailments. So tell us a bit about the goals for this evolution. Mm -hmm. Well, um, okay, so, you know, just to start off, you know, the reason that we even, you know, we had started filming it before, like going into COVID also like before, before COVID there's so there's pre COVID and then post COVID, even with this project. Um, you know, the, the two people that are like the owners of the business are really interesting characters to begin with. You know, like they're both, uh, they're talk about diversity, they're both people of color as well, you know, like, and, uh, you know, for, I think for both of them, they kind of fell into the business. We were originally more focusing on not even so much the cannabis side of it, but also the business side of it. It was like a really risky business for them. You know, you have, you have Mike who, you know, like, you know, you have Mike, you have Mark, Mark, Mark was the originator. He was the founder of the company, you know, and, and he, you know, he was like, you're, you know, you're, he did it since he was in college. You know what I mean? Like it was almost like a side hustle for him. You know, he's, he was also working in the broadcast industry. You know, like uh, he was one of my editors at one point, you know what I mean? Like, and he he started it out as a side hustle delivering, you know, edibles originally, you know, like, and it turned into, you know, a regular gig for him and for Mike too. It was like, Mike was going and he was becoming a cop when he first started doing it. And he's a physical trainer and, in a gym you know what i mean like but they had this is like you know they had the delivery side of it and here it's like it was a fringe business you know like it wasn't actually legal in new york like it is in california you know like or in other regions you know like so you know they were operating this business that was you know completely on the edge you know like really you know always having to kind of look over their backs on top of everything else and being in the closet with their families you know like you know the family's thinking well they do this they don't really do that you know like they have this other job you know like and holding these events which were really you know highly successful and and they have people that are you know prominent people in various different industries even you know like and the events weren't necessarily they were social events they weren't necessarily just cannabis events because it wasn't you know yeah they have stuff that's cannabis but then you know if you don't partake you know like they have clean food too <laughs> like you could get clean food and drinks they were doing cocktails and you know it, it was like you can get it with cbd you can get it with nothing you can get a virgin you know like it's all right and you can still hang out with your friends and if, even if they partake and you don't you you know you can still have a social situation and not feel uncomfortable and um you know so we thought this was really fascinating at the time even going into it and then once once COVID happened, like they were on the, they were, they were right on the edge of opening up a restaurant and having this as a full-time thing instead of just doing it like monthly or whatever, you know, having the speakeasy and, um, you know, what ended up happening in, in the, in the interim was that, you know, like there were so many places that shut down in, in, in all of it and in the area and they were delivery service. Like they ended up becoming an essential business because people just needed food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, if you had to order out, you know, like there weren't a lot of people that were, they, they ended up having to ramp it up with their delivery service because people were just like, they were ordering off the menu needing to just eat, you know, like, and it turned into something completely different, you know, like it was like interesting how the legislation ended up kind of getting pushed through, through all that also. I mean, it just literally opened, you know, in New York, like here recently, you know, like, and, uh, you know, because I feel like with certain businesses, because they were already operating, you know, they're probably more in line for their licensing and stuff like that than others, because they already have their models, you know, they already have their, you know, they already have their, their traffic and their, you know, they have their systems, right? <clears throat> They're, they've already got it, you know, keyed in as opposed to somebody that's maybe starting a new business. But I, I felt like it was really an interesting story to tell because you get to see them, you know, really like they help people they're help like they don't they care about the people that they're servicing you know what i mean like they know all the stories behind you know the people that they're working with the people that they you know that, that they deliver to you know what I mean? like it's like 
because they socialize with them on their own time and things like that too. It's not necessarily, you know, just like it is with most businesses when it's a small business, you know, like, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, like, I, I, like I'm, we're really excited about that. You know, like this is what we do was one of their mottos, you know, like it's something that they use in their catch line, I guess you could say. So we, we included it, you know, okay. we included it in their, tagline yeah okay um okay so i've got one last question um and basically what are you most proud of with dark moon entertainment uh i would probably like that we're still here <laughs> can i say that uh i think the thing i'm most proud of is that i'm like bringing together the team that i have you know like everyone's been pretty much hand-picked so you know <sighs> everyone has their respective genres you know like but it's like i have a great team that every, everyone has their own stories you know like that are unique that i think deserve to be heard and hired and you know they're picked up you know like we we have me i feel like we have i really believe in it i feel like we have media that's going to change the way people think you know like i believe in our messages you know like i, I think that we're going to make a difference because a lot of the a lot of the stories that we have, you know, like even on the scripted side, you know, what I mean, like it's stuff that's going to challenge the way people think or help them get in a new perspective, you know, like, or help them, you know, create empathy, uh, you know, like for, you know, because you start to relate to the characters, the more that you get to know them and you get to know those stories, you know, like, and a lot of these stories are like from people's own experiences too. So it's like you end up you know even when they develop the characters it's like you're developing a character and if it's not if it's a fictional it's you're usually still basing it on somebody that you know or you know what i mean like but i feel like it's gonna really it's gonna make people be able to empathize and put themselves in in someone else's shoes you know what i mean like dealing with some of the topics that we deal with every day now you know what i mean like and i think a lot of people have become more aware of that in covid you know like you know, you see newscasters with their kids running in, you know what I mean? Like, or somebody having to deal with their dog, you know, like, or their mother that's sick, you know, like, these are, these are, this is what really resonates for people. And I think it's really important, you know, like, maybe, maybe it's okay to like, you know, all right, maybe you're not transgender, but maybe you should, you should know what that feels like to live in that person's experience for a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for real, you know, what I mean, like, not just the, you know, sometimes I think people homogenize the stories or they, um, or they end up making it, you know, making it seem like it's glossed over or they kid around about it to the point where it's, it's like a, you know, ha 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 ha. But you know what I mean? Like, we, I feel like we, we have, you. it's okay if you're doing that, like with a serious topic, but you're like letting the air, you know, letting the air out of it, so to speak, you know, like, but, um, you know like as a like a relief you know like release type you uh -huh. know but sometimes i think they they take the wrong stance on it though too if it's if it's there's a there's a balance that you have to have yeah. in, in push and pull you know so um okay well on that note dawn i want to thank you for your time and insights and reflections today it's been very interesting to me i mean learning about dot dot moon doing some of the programming i mean the the, the cannabis one i'm definitely i think a lot of people will be interested in um yeah. so so okay so on that note um please do check out dot moon's work at www.darkmoon.tv um, Film and TV Now continues to champion independent filmmakers in events like the London Independence, Los Angeles International, and the Paris International Film Festivals, which we were an official press partner. Do check out our page at www.filmandtvnow.com for more interview specials, news, and reviews of brand new independent films across the globe. Support independent filmmakers and actors during this challenging time, and do support the mainstream and indie cinemas that are on their way back out of lockdown and do join us for another interview special very soon. Thank you one, thank you all. Oh yeah, sorry Dawn, yeah. It's like, if they wanted to also check out the sizzle for Meat, Sweets and Treats, it's meatsweetsandtreats.com. <laughs> okay, well there you have it people. Um, we'll check that out and as I say, we'll, we'll, we'll um, you can check that out and do it. So thank you again Dawn and so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. Have a, have a really great weekend. Yeah, thank you.